With God, nothing is impossible. The question is, do we trust in His power and His good intentions? Before last Thanksgiving, my husband and I invited several leaders from the Family Church I in California to gather in our home for fellowship and worship. I asked the group, what are you most thankful to God for? As everyone shared their testimonies of God's blessings, I silently thought to myself, then came Thanksgiving Day, when we hosted a party at our home, inviting fellow Christians to join us, including five or six children. The kids asked for permission to go down to the pool. While most of the guests had left, we began tidying up the house while the children played out. When I finished cleaning, I stepped outside and saw the kids playing by the pool. One of the older children told me, there's someone in the water. I looked closely and was horrified to realize it was my son lying at the bottom of the pool. I panicked, not knowing what to do. By the time my husband jumped in to pull him out, his limbs were cold and stiff and his eyes had rolled back. I could only look up to God in desperation. I prayed, asking God to forgive me for my carelessness and not watching over my son. Then I heard a clear voice in my heart, breathe into the boy's mouth. At that moment, I felt a new breath of life enter his body. His body warmed up and water gushed out, but there were still no signs of life. I kept asking, is he still alive? On the way to the hospital and in the days that followed, I prayed continuously. I told God, if I have sinned, let your punishment fall on me but spare the child. Let me bear the consequences of my sins. The entire church, along with believers from everywhere, united in constant prayer for my son. We fought in prayer, pleading for God's mercy. My son remained in a coma, still in critical condition, requiring continued use of a ventilator. The doctors tried to remove the breathing tube to see if he could breathe on his own. They warned that if he couldn't, he might end up in a vegetative state. The first attempt failed, and the second one did too. The doctors performed an MRI on his brain, which showed normal results. They couldn't believe it. How could his brain be unaffected after being underwater for so long? But they remained cautious, saying, the scans look fine, but we don't know what will happen when he wakes up. The doctors reminded us that with modern medical technology, any part of the body can be treated, except the brain. That's not the end of the story. Years before, I had prayed for God to heal my father's cancer. That morning, my father went to church to testify, but that evening, he passed away. I was deeply hurt and angry at God and stopped worshiping for over a year. That's why I didn't believe God would save my son. But this incident healed the wound in my heart and brought me closer to God. I had always thought that God wouldn't forgive me or hear my prayers anymore. But when Daniel came back to life, I realized that God's mercy is far greater than we can imagine. He is always ready to forgive when we confess our sins. God revealed to me that He is the one who has the power to heal and that everything in my life is part of His good plan. This miracle amazed my neighbors, the doctors, and the entire church, who all gave thanks and praised God. For me, I boldly shared this great miracle and the boundless love of God. Praise the Lord.